Welcome to this 3ds Max tutorial. This tutorial is for beginners. Today we will be creating a chain link, which will be this one here. Seems simple enough, but there are a few things that need to be looked at as doing it, which will follow through as we go. The first and obvious way, which is a very simple way to create a chain link, is to use the Taurus item here in 3ds Max, which creates a nice donut. And let's say we put it to about there. Let's get a better look. Let's alter the inner radius slightly. That looks good. Now, what we do is we convert this to a polygon, select vertexes, and if you notice here, on the horizontal line from the top view that we're working on, these vertexes are on the line. On the vertical line, there are no vertexes on either side, but they are slightly off. Let's select all and center to stage. That looks better. What we now do is we select the whole bottom half set of vertices and we just grab the selection tool and stretch down. Now while we're there we just do that. Now that's a good basic chain link, maybe a little bit longer. Do a quick render and you see it looks quite nice. Now here's the problem using this method. If we go to materials, I've got a nice material here, stick that on there, close that. Now if we render out, you'll notice something. Here in the midsection, the material seems to have stretched. Now unfortunately, it's got to do with the, the way the material has been put onto the object. So to not have this problem, we will proceed in another manner. If you are not worried about a recursive mesh or material, then you can welcome to use this if you're just using plain colors. But if you're going to be using a material that has got a recurring pattern of some sort on it, I do not recommend using this at all. So we shall start anew again. And for this, we shall use the cylinder we shall go into, let's say, left view, and yeah, that will be fine. Now we're going to either the top view or front view. I shall go front view, and let's work in the front view. Now I've got. Plenty of segments here if you notice. The basic setting will have about five segments as basic. But you want to ramp this up to a reasonably high number. The amount of sides I suggest having around about 20. Gives a reasonably smooth finish, but it's not too high a count. Now what we need to do is do a zoom out. Let's go to height and let's really extend it. We want it nice and long. That'll do. 
Let's change, change the radius to a nice round number, 20. Right, now what we do is once we've got our general item, we convert it to a mesh or polygon and we select vertices. Now what you need to do is roughly about half of them select come over to the modify panel hit the drop down list for modify and go to the bend modifier we open the bend modifier <coughs> go to gizmo puts the selection arrow in the middle which is nice now notice what we are working on because we are on this view what we want is the Y axis so you click here to the Y axis and you'll see why in a second change angle to 90 good number to test Ooh, that's a, a no no well, I've done that <clears throat> direction 90 that'll do right while we're on the gizmo we slide the gizmo up so it matches roughly to the first set of vertices that are not selected and let's bring this up a little now we select the green side and we can do that now if we go up and down but it's not quite what we want yet so we go back to angle and we increase it let's double it say 180 and that brings it nicely but it's not in line we need to be in line with this line here so let's slowly decrease to try and match yeah, come back one and that looks good and then we slide the gizmo up slowly and you see it now scrunching it up what you do is you get where you think it will look good and do a quick render there yeah, it's not bad right now with the bend modifier if we come to the stack click on edit poly you notice it undoes it but it's still there it's all in memory that is because we can easily change the section that we are bending if we want to but because we are already working on the other side the measurements are out so we'll just return to that side now what we do is, while it's in this position, we convert again back to a poly, which now bakes in this bend. But now we have this extra long piece here. So we go back again to select vertices. Those are still selected. We go up to our edit, and we go select invert. We now go up to our scale tool, and we only scale along this line and we bring it in roughly to about there and then we move it up well that's it for part one please return for part two where we'll complete the model